In the Pause of Passing Paintings of the North Pennines by Paul Stangrum With poems by Noel Connor Read by Mike Tickell For many years, the artist Paul Stangrum has dedicated himself to painting the remote and ruined farmsteads of the North Pennines. In this selection of works from their unique collaboration, Noel Connor populates his friends' exquisite paintings and finds a living pulse inside these abandoned farms and derelict buildings. Noel's poetry pays homage to the lives, loves and hardships of these departed communities and to one artist's determination to capture the surviving and poignant evidence of their existence. Unwritten. Sunlight mocks me. It's glare an empty page moving imperceptibly across this grey slate, wishing words upon it. When the wind is from the ridge, her laughter can carry across her father's fields. If I could catch it, care for it, hold it in this byre for winter, bed it in sweet straw each evening, then she might follow. Sunlight mocks me, its glare an empty page, moving imperceptibly across this grey slate, wishing words upon it, those letters I could never write. Pause for Thought I watch you pause for thought against this square of light, absorbed in landscape, your silhouette cut from sky and trees and rich brown bracken, each distant peak and gully lined across our shared horizon. A drift of hair, soft as shadow, falls across your forehead, is fingered back behind your ear, and in a single moment, I may never be so happy, breathing in your stillness. After dark. After dark, our world shrinks to a carpet of light, spread below the window, warming frosted flagstones, staggering down to the gate, Exhausting itself entirely against the moorland night. I watch you from the yard, moving in the kitchen, deep within yourself. Gracefully ordering the day's end. Then your shadow on the wall, settling down behind you for company. Only moving when I lift that clumsy latch. My father built this byre without a word, bunkered it to the hillside, stone by chosen stone, tight rafted the low roof, then tile on tile waded down, below the grip of any vengeful gale. Every driven nail is his, sunk deep in sweet new timber, ten thousand hammerings, striking off the steel grey sky. Small world, here you learn to stand, filling the window, a snug fit, your pug nose pressed against the glass, and me still cradling you in the crook of my fingers under your outstretched arms. 
Your fingertips found balance in these walls. Tiny feet learned to plant themselves. But I taught you distance from the start. Pointing out the snow-lined crags, each hard-won field. The land that you would one day walk away from. The window you outgrew. The Pantry Cold company on the stone shelves A hard-faced cheese A plattered slab of yellow butter A clutch of nine brown eggs settled in a heavy bowl A dried ham, darkening, ripening the salted air My chill confessional Two worn steps below a kitchen Its single deep-set window A slattered hatch of weathered pine Frigid walls impervious to my presence, My soft tread on the unforgiving flagstones, Quiet as cream rising in this morning's milk, I listen to the yard, My children's wind-blown squabbles, Their laughter rustling in the trees. I grew to love, one. I grew to love that tree, solitary, thick-skinned, clenching itself to the stony ridge behind the house, muscling into the wall. Young whippersnapper, it defied each winter, learned when to bend, to lean away when the wind demanded, to grow slow and hard-hearted, a gnarled knowledge shaping to survive, knotting itself to the landscape. 2. Each evening, my private ritual, I'd plant myself against the twisted trunk to roll a cigarette. How many paper leaves unfurled in all those years beneath that tree, sweetly licked, then gently curled between my calloused fingers. How many sheltered matches struck? How many tender cuppings? Only once you caught me, watching through the window. Hardly turned your head to hold my gaze. We had never said so much, entwined in silence, rooted to the spot. Still life. She stored her jam jars on the open shelf beside an old school jotter. Handwritten recipes laid down line by line in deliberate pencil, like a child's tidy homework. The well thumbed cover bruised in blackberry. Jam jars on a windowsill, preserved in watercolour. No more than berry stains on paper. A still life ripening on your autumn easel. Spring Flowers, 1912 to 1962. Fifty years of gathering watching for their shy return each late reluctant spring, picking my way down through Shildon Wood and along the sheltered lane side to the sparrowed hedge, or making the slow climb to find them in ones and twos, trembling along the top field's ragged edge. Each time a private celebration, spreading my spring harvest across the kitchen table to nip and trim and fuss, feeding them one by one to my favourite yellow jug, offering them to the sunlit sill. A stranger has found his way through my shambled door, standing silent by the gaping window, his figure framed in a landscape fifty years unviewed, 
staring off beyond the disgrace of my fallen gait. The shame of my empty grate chills his back. The draught, a damp breath to feed jealous nettles, wheedling for attention on the rotten sill. Tomorrow, settled at his easel, he will hold the brush as gently as a fine-cut stem, dip its bud of sable in fresh water, soak this previous stretch of sky in a wash of pale stitchwort, add celandine to light my distant hills. Empty chair, what would I give to see you here again? Your silent silhouette sat back, hands relaxed on the curved oak, and my right hand settled on yours. Our shared pulse, the only movement to disturb the stillness. This speckled universe of sunlit dust. <laughs> 